What's the word, y'all? Drew Holiday was traded to the Boston Celtics, and I got a lot to talk about. Yes, that was 48 hours ago. Yes, I'm the last man on YouTube to talk about it, but I was away on work in Detroit, and I didn't have any equipment, so I'm finally home, so better late than never. Before we start talking about it, I need to plug the fact that these hats that you've been seeing me wear over the last two months in these videos are finally going on sale tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. It's my birthday, my birthday drop. It's very limited. We dropped the other colorway before, but everybody's like, Kenny, we need the black and white, and I Honestly, the black and white was just created for me. But I was like, if they want it, we got to bring it to them. So tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern time. I also want to plug the Kenny Beecham podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We finally have the visual aspect of it. Uh, we dropped our first video about the Damian Lillard trade a couple days ago. We're about to drop the next episode to kind of talk about media day and this trade we're talking about today. That is the Kenny Beecham podcast on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you can get a podcast, it's there. Last time I checked, I was the seventh biggest basketball podcast in America and the only people that were beating me was my other podcast through the wire a Sixers pod Paul George the athletic all the smoke and club Shay Shay so Shannon Sharp I'm coming for that number one spot but I can't get the number one spot if y'all don't go download and watch the episode so uh, shout out to everybody that's already been supporting but I just need to plug it as much as I can y'all all right let's talk about the trade uh, Drew Holiday is a Boston Celtic in exchange from for Robert Williams, Malcolm Brog, and two first round picks. One of them being from the Warriors that is heavily protected for 2024, and then another first round pick that's like down the line, unprotected from the Boston Celtics. And boom! Now the Boston Celtics have the best top six rotation in all the basketball. I don't know what they starting lineup can look like. There's a couple different variations. There's a small ball variation that has Derek White and Drew Holiday gonna be probably the best defensive backcourt in all the basketball. It has the Jays that's two All NBA players and poor Zingas who had an all-star caliber season last year his first season being completely healthy and then Al Horford who's 37 shot 44% from three last year and was pretty good that is the top six that you could change up the lineup maybe Derek White comes off the bench sometimes and they put the two bigs in the lineup I don't know but this trade in my opinion is a no-brainer now a couple days before this I put together a mock trade on Twitter where I had this exact same trade package going out in exchange for Drew Holiday and there were some Celtics fans like Kenny there's a zero percent chance we trade Robert Williams in exchange for Drew Holiday and then a day game and that's exactly what they did and I understand it man when you see a player that you drafted that turned into a player that could make all defensive teams if he stayed healthy a player that could be in DPOY conversations when he's healthy you see him get traded away you're gonna go through all of the stages of grief, especially when you found him diamond in the rough situation. So at first it was denial, then it was some anger, there was some bargaining. Whatever the all the stages of, of grief is, I think some Celtics fans went through all of that. But in my opinion, this is a worthy chance if you are Brad Stevens. Because as good as Robert Williams has been or can be, we all know that he struggles with staying on the floor. Just his last season, just 35 games, and he was relatively healthy come playoff time, healthy enough to at least suit up. And in a series that they lost against the Miami Heat, the brother played at the max 25 minutes in game one. And then we saw his minutes go down and down and down to the point where in this game seven, where, well, I guess a lot of people didn't play because it was a blowout. He only ended up playing about 14 total minutes. So the conversations you need to have as a front office when you have Jason Tatum, who's a top 10 player in basketball, Jalen Brown, who just gave all his money and just made an all NBA team. You just traded for poor Zingas. You need to figure out, is it worth going all in? And in their mind, it was. Because I couldn't imagine you decided to go against this trade. We're like, nah, that's a little bit too much. We won't rob. And letting Rob's health really determine whether or not we are conference final team, which they've been able to do almost every single season over the last 100 years, it feels like, or a championship quality team. Robert Williams' health, do we really want the franchise to be in his hands or his legs or his feet? No. So we're going to go get a guy who has made an all-star game this season, always an all-defensive player, is a guy that we saw be a point guard on a championship team just a few years ago, even though he struggled shooting the ball in the playoffs. This is Drew Holiday we're talking about. Would we rather have Drew Holiday or Robert Williams? Plain and simple. Because that Warriors first-round pick that you gave up is not valuable. The Warriors will be good, and it is heavily protected. The one pick down the line, I mean, the way the NBA has changed, you don't really know if that pick's going to be valuable. But again, you have the Jays who are young and maybe not even in their prime just yet. I'm okay with giving up that first-round pick. So at the end of the day, is it would you rather have Rob to help have a bench, or I'm sorry, big man depth, or we rather have Drew Holiday in a position of need because because we traded away Marcus Smart a couple months ago. This is a no-brainer. And the reality is, I keep seeing people say, man, they gave up a lot, they gave up a lot. Maybe they did, but they were also competing with other teams. This is the, the thing that I don't understand, that fans don't understand. 
Drew Holiday is a commodity across the association. They were not bidding against themselves. They were bidding against other teams that would like Drew Holiday services. And maybe one day we'll figure out what those other teams were or other trade offers were. But you don't throw two first round picks plus Rob Woods plus Malcolm Brogdon if there's nobody else really competing for the player. So they wanted to have the best offer and they got that. And now we can say for the most part, the dust has settled on the Drew Holiday trade. I'm sorry, on the Damian Lillard trade. And I can say the Portland Trailblazers walk away and say, hey, we did the best we possibly could. We got a 25-year-old, two 25-year-old centers, um, one of them being a former first overall pick. We got a, a slew of draft capital and a lot, of them, a lot of them being down the line. And we feel good about it. Do you know who, who feels good, but maybe not great? The Milwaukee Bucks. Of course, they, they're happy with Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard is that good where they're happy with Damian Lillard. But probably the last thing they wanted was to see Drew Holiday end up on one of the two teams that they have to go through to win that championship. Because, again, we're talking about the best top six in basketball, in my personal opinion. Drew Holiday in the playoff series that he saw Damian Lillard, granted it was six years ago, had Damian Lillard on lock. And I don't, I'm not saying that's the case now because Drew Holiday, as good of a defender he is, Offense wins at the end of that. We just saw uh, Jimmy Butler give Drew Holiday the work for an entire series. And it's not that Drew Holiday played bad defense. Offense just overpowers defense at times. But they have the opportunity to be such a, a lethal defensive team. The backcourt both being all defensive caliber players. Jalen Brown is a good defender. Maybe not as good as he was maybe three to four years ago with his offensive intake going up. But we know he can sit in that chair. And, and Jason Tatum is one of the better two-way forwards in basketball. And we're getting Porzingis, who's a shot blocker. And then uh, Al at 37. I don't know what to expect, but if it's anything close to what last season is, the defense is there. Now, obviously, you worry about the depth because you got rid of the Williamses because Grant Williams went out earlier this offseason. Marcus Smart went out. So now you're requiring guys like Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett to step up. Maybe Jordan, uh, Jared Walsh step up to play some real regular season minutes. But come postseason, we all know that a lot of the coaches shorten their rotation to seven to eight and if your six is as good as theirs is, they, they feel really good. I cannot express to you how excited I am about a potential, let's say, single game in the regular season. All four of those games between Boston and Milwaukee should be bangers. And if we see that in the playoffs, it's, it's ridiculous. The, the one thing they should worry about a little bit is the big man depth, obviously. Again, Al Horford being 37 and Porzingis with his in injury history. Uh, he already dealt with an injury this offseason, but he's back on the court, which is great. That is the one thing. That was the one saving grace of having Robert Williams in the back pocket. But again, we mentioned how many games he's played. It's not like he's the savant when it comes to playing a bunch of games. So worst case scenario, knock on wood, Porzingis ends up with a nagging injury or Al Horford ends up with a nagging injury. It's just a, it's a stretch to, to kind of feel those minutes. But the goal is to have it from April to, to, to June, healthy basketball. And if you could do that, and you were telling me that you believe that the Boston Celtics are the favorite to win the NBA championship, I can't be mad at you because that roster, top six, is just that good. Uh, this is a team that has been in the conference finals, conference finals, conference finals, one con uh, NBA finals appearance, but it felt like they were always missing something. And Drew Holiday might be one of those missing pieces. The best thing about having Drew Holiday, at least in this case, is that the best, he's the third option on the best day. Or the fourth option on a bad day. You know, you're not you're not overtaxing Drew Holiday. We're trying to be something that he's not. And that could be the piece that makes it just better. We know he's a plug and play guy. He doesn't mind if he doesn't have to take a lot. They get to take a lot of shots. He wants to be a winner. And that's why when he was asked what teams he's interested in playing in, the Boston Celtics were number one on his list because he knows how good they are right now and how much he can provide for that team. Now, defensively, he can match everything that Marcus Smart did last season. Obviously, the impact on the the, the locker room stuff that Marcus Smart brought, I, I, I don't know if he can fill those shoes, but still, just the basketball in itself got that back plus some. It's an all-star. Now, he's older. Dame is older. And, and eventually, you, you look and say, like, hey, when is the time going to come where they start to progress? But again, Drew Holiday just made his first all-star appearance in 10 years. Damian Lillard was an all-NBA player. Like, I don't think this is happening soon. So this, again, is a worthy trade. But it, it will be interesting to see how long it takes to jail. Because, again, you, you kind of reformulated a bunch of your roster where, like, real rotational starter pieces are completely gone. How long will it take for Drew Holiday and the Jays to get on the same pace? So you can ask the same thing about Dame and Giannis. And that was one of the things they mentioned in Media Day yesterday. Like, yeah, we're excited and we think we can win it all. But it might take a little bit of time for us to get used to each other. And that's, that's just the reality of basketball. And that reality 
might determine who ends up winning an eventual series, right? Who can click the fastest in the postseason. These two teams have so many parallels. Now, I understand that Joe Mazzulla has one NBA season under his belt, but he is a second-year coach, while Adrian Griffin is a first-year coach. Both of them have coaching staffs of players or, or coaches that have been a part of good organizations, been good coaches. Terry Stotts is here, Seb Casale is here, and so on and so forth. They both have a, a front court ish player, a wing player, and Giannis and Jason Tatum, who are widely considered top players in ball. Obviously, Giannis is no lower than the third best player in ball, and Jason Tatum is probably teetering on the back end of 10. But these are players that have made all NBA appearances time in and time out. They both have these stretch bigs that can block shots in Porzingis and, and Brooke Lopez. They both have these secondary bucket getters and Chris Middleton and, and Jalen Brown. Like the parallels are crazy between these two. And I don't know what I believe to be the better team at this moment. I don't know. I was so heavily on the Dame trade before Drew Holiday ended up here because the Celtics were already really good. Now, the, the good thing you could say about the, the Bucks over the Celtics is that they only have to incorporate really one piece, and that's a big piece of Damian Lillard, but the rest of the team is pretty much intact, while the Boston Celtics have to incorporate Porzingis and Drew Holiday, so maybe that is a little edge towards the Milwaukee Bucks. But even then, I don't really know. I love this trade for the Boston Celtics, because even if it does not work, you can't just say that you, you didn't try. And I feel like a lot of organizations are afraid to take that chance. This is a worthy chance. You know, Robert Williams can turn out to be an all defensive player. This could be his first fully healthy season. And you probably wouldn't look back because Drew Holiday can provide what he can provide. You can't run your organization, your business, your, your establishment scared. They could have been complacent. Hey, we got the Jays. And the Jays are good enough to make it to the conference finals every year. But that's not what Brad Stevens is doing. He would take the risk of getting a 33-year-old Drew Holiday, take the risk of giving up a 25-year-old promising player because the ceiling on one team seems higher, even if that also means the floor is lower. They still have a ton of second-round picks that they can use to establish some depth later down in the season, but I'm super excited about this, and for Portland, they also get a really good grade because I, they, they still have a chance to trade Malcolm Brogdon for a, a bunch of seconds or a lot uh, like a lottery protected first or whatever it may be. And they can look at themselves in the mirror and say, hey, we traded away one of the best players in our franchise history, and we get back things that we value. You know, a lot of these big-time player moves like, oh, can they get a 21-year-old player who might be a superstar someday? Can they get Shea Gilgis Alexander plus a bunch of draft capital? As you see the other superstar trades over the years, that's not really the case all the time. Having a rant was like Mikael Bridges and, and Cam Johnson, and a lot of people didn't expect Mikael Bridges on the second half of the season to turn into an all-star caliber player, and then they got the draft capital. On the surface level, the Rudy Gobert trade was uh, Rudy Gobert for a bunch of draft capital. Nobody expected Walker Kessler to turn into what he is, but that's what it ended up being, and we don't know what DeAndre Aiden can look like with a new establishment. In media day, he looked amazing. He looked like he's about to have a ton of fun. Does fun equal good? I don't know. But I'm excited that we're here. Go watch, listen to the Kenny Beachum podcast because I got so much more to say, but we need more time.